Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast for those looking to optimize their long-term health and weight goals and understand how their body really works. I am your host. I am Shemaine Laney. I'm a fitness and nutrition expert, certified nutritional therapist, iridologist, and biohacker, and I'm very happy to have you back with me for another piece of your day. I think you're going to find this episode super helpful and informative, and hopefully if you do implement what I recommend or inform you of in this episode, you will let me know if it worked for you or not. Before I go on, I must remind you that the information in these podcast episodes is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please consult your health practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. Okay, so we're going to look at yerba mate today. I think this episode is long overdue, especially since I've been talking about and using and recommending yerba mate for years. And alongside yerba mate, we hear about another tea that has many health benefits, including for fat loss, and that is green tea. Maybe I'll do an episode or a video on that shortly, but today we're going to focus on yerba mate. Yerba mate, as many people will know, is a tea that's generally consumed in South America, but also it's quite popular throughout the Middle East. So the botanical name for yerba mate is Ilex paraguasis. You may also hear yerba mate referred to as just mate or mate as well. So if you get confused and you hear someone's talking about mate or mate and you're wondering, is that the same as yerba mate? Yeah, it is. Now, yerba mate is an incredible drink. Uh, generally drank, but you can get supplements, just like you can get supplements of everything. But it's generally drank and it has an amazing nutritional profile, especially when it comes to minerals. Yerba mate, not many people know, is very high in electrolytes. It also then is a good source of caffeine, just as much as coffee, which can, of course, help with our metabolism, energy, mental alertness, cognitive performance. And there's other aspects of yerba mate that have been shown to help us fight cancer and inflammation and reduce cholesterol. So we're going to get into that. Um, Yerba mate does have a good source of caffeine. Depending on how it's made, it's going to equal or approximate the amount that you have in coffee or black tea. Um, For a lot of people, it can be a good alternative to coffee or black tea because you won't get as much of that kind of jittery boost. But even when it comes to the jittery boost, that can be associated to the cleanliness of the caffeine or the purification of the caffeine, even the processing of how that coffee is made. But so we've got the caffeine aspect, which I think at this stage, many people know there's a lot of benefits to caffeine. We've got uh, minerals. It's got a great mineral profile, electrolyte rich. It also has 196 active compounds, which includes vitamins, those minerals and antioxidants. So yerba mate actually is quite high in polyphenols and antioxidants, even when compared to other teas, even green tea. So yerba mate, I will point you before we go on, if you want to look at research or learn about yerba mate a bit more, actually in a very easily digestible way, apart from this podcast episode, I like to use examine.com which is a free platform for research, studies, different molecules. It's an amazing database of information. So if you want to look into this more yourself, you can go to examine.com and you can just use the search bar and search for your bomate or any other molecule or pharmaceutical or whatever you want. Um, And that's going to be a great resource for you. So yerba mate, like I mentioned, traditionally 
consumed in South America, Argentina, and its tea-like beverage has been referred to the tea of the gods because of its health benefits and its different stimulating effects, but it's definitely becoming more popular around the world, as is all tea. So it's, like I mentioned, it's common in Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, southern Brazil, Syria, Lebanon, um, across the, the Middle East there. And while it is quite popular in those areas, especially in the health industry or the health world of the West, we're seeing a lot more talk about yerba mate or mate. Um, and, and it's not without surprise when you hear about all the different benefits. So yerba mate is a species of the holly family. Like I mentioned, the botani botanical name is Ilex paraguasis. Um, it's a tea that's brewed from the dried leaves of yerba mate, which can be found in the form of, it's like an evergreen shrub or tree, but there is research to show us that actually the berries of the yerba mate tree, consuming those can be of higher concentration in everything, including the fat burning potential, which we're going to get to. Um, but the benefits are certainly plentiful and range from preventing and treating cancer to um, boosting fat metabolism and oxidation, increased energy levels, cognitive performance. Um, research has shown, and you will find this on examine.com as well, that yerba mate is able to reduce LDL cholesterol within 20 days of supplementation, which is amazing, and it has protective properties for the heart and the cardiovascular system. If you're in my Facebook biohacking group, you will see I've posted several studies um, on yerba mate and its health and fat burning potential benefits. So it, it really is, um, it's a tool that you can utilize quite easily because you're just making tea. And I've always said tea is medicine. So Let's look at a couple of these benefits. So we'll, let's start off with the fat or the weight loss aspect because that's where most people are interested. And as many of us know, if you do need to lose weight and you do lose the weight, you are going to see a lot of your health conditions improve in any way. So the leaves and the stems of yerba mate contain um, a lot of different polyphenols, which we know are very important when it comes to weight loss and even keeping the weight off, but they also contain saponins, um, which will also be called ursolic acid and oleanolic acid glycosides. So studies have shown us that these saponins in the tea can help reduce weight by stimulating GLP-1. So GLP-1 being glucagon-like peptide 1, which increases the amount of fat you burn by helping to mobilize and oxidize oxidized fat from stored fat. So pretty much the opposite of what insulin does. Insulin prevents us from mobilizing and oxidizing or breaking down our fat from our stored fat. But glucagon, through the pathway of GLP-1 or glucagon-like peptide 1, that actually increases that fat mobilization and therefore the amount of fat that you're burning, which not only helps with the fat loss, helps with the metabolic grade, helps with um, changes in body composition, can have a real thermic, a thermogenic effect on the body. Um, so yerba mate ingestion, proven to increase fat oxidation and energy expenditure, was shown in a 2014 study published by Nutrition and Metabolism, which examined the effects of yerba mate on healthy 
males and females. The study concluded that its ingestion can increase the exercise effectiveness for weight loss and sports performance, but not just with weight loss. So we do see that yerba mate before a workout can really, especially a fasted workout, can really increase the fat burning potential. Now I'm not saying you have to work out fasted to experience fat loss, but in the research what we see is yerba mate as basically a pre-workout can increase the fat burning during the workout but not just a workout this can also be beneficial for people who don't work out or don't quote exercise as much we still see benefits from yerba mate another randomized double blind study showed that yerba mate supplementation decreased body fat percentage body fat and waist to hip ratio it exhibited potential anti-obesity benefits that did not produce any adverse side effects these findings suggest that yerba mate supplementation can be an effective way to fight obesity and back to that whole like most of yerba mate's beneficial effects in regards to body composition and fat loss are uh, uh, through the pathway of GLP-1, which is also the pathway that a lot of weight loss prescription drugs work like Ozempic or semaglutide, they work through upregulating the GLP-1 pathway, but also improving leptin sensitivity. Another benefit of yerba mate is that it increases leptin sensitivity. Now, leptin, being our satiety hormone, also plays a huge part in body fat set point. So when you lose weight, you're changing, or the goal is to hopefully change your body fat set point. So your body gets used to being at a different set point for the amount of body fat you carry. One thing that'll happen here is changes in your leptin hormone, which is your satiety hormone. Generally, when people start to lose a lot of weight, if they're not taking, um, a, I'll just say a smart approach to it or have a proper understanding of all the different hormones, when they get to a point where they've lost a lot of weight, their body can try to compensate and push back. If you want to learn a lot more about body fat set point, I have a whole masterclass on this on my YouTube channel and maybe in the podcast somewhere. If it's not there, I'll make sure I upload it soon. But the body will try to push back and how it does this, it causes uncontrolled overeating. So you'll start eating and then you find you just can't stop, even though you're thinking in your head, oh my God, I'm doing so good. I've lost weight. I've been on track for so long, but what's going on? Why can't I stop eating today? Even if it's healthy food or what we would consider healthy food, you will struggle to stop. You, it's just, it's an incontrollable factor. It's your hormones. Um, but yerba mate can really help with that. So helping to curb the overeating tendencies, improve the leptin sensitivity and helping to shift that body weight set point to keep it where it is at that time where you've lost weight or to continue to move it lower. This can be a valuable tool. And again, you're just drinking tea. And the research is here. There is one um, awesome study, the positive effects of yerba mate. You'll find it in PubMed in obesity that basically shows that um, yerba mate addresses several of the abnormal and disease-causing factors associated with obesity, it has protective and ameliorative effects on insulin resistance, um, and as a general conclusion, it seems that yerba mate beverages and supplements might be helpful in the battle against obesity for, I'm, I'm adding in, for many reasons. So the GLP-1, we've got the leptin sensitivity, we've got um, the caffeine, we've got the polyphenols. Let's take a look at the cholesterol, which cholesterol obviously playing a big part in weight, body weight and obesity. So 
Yerba mate has been shown to reduce cholesterol levels, especially what we would consider the bad cholesterol, or when I say we, most people, the LDL cholesterol. Studies have shown that consumption of yerba mate tea can naturally improve serum lipid levels, thereby lowering cholesterol levels. And I would add in triglycerides as well here. So when you lower cholesterol, you're generally impacting triglycerides to and inflammation, which we'll get to. Um, but a study published in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry showed that yerba mate consumption resulted in a reduction of LDL, quote, bad cholesterol for healthy dyslipidemic subjects, basically people with high levels of cholesterol and triglycerides. Um, as well as an additional LDL cholesterol reductions in individuals on statins. So people on cholesterol-lowering medication that we know they generally have a lot of side effects, they even saw an improvement in them. As many of us know, it's wise to keep an eye on your cholesterol. There's obviously a bigger picture, but... We'd like to keep all of our numbers in a nice range and back to if you can do something as simple as consuming yerba mate tea regularly and you're going to see improvements in these different markers, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Um, so while we're on cholesterol, let's go to the inflammatory aspect because um, cholesterol, and especially when cholesterol becomes a concern, really has to be considered in the context of inflammation. Um, so when you look at all the different components of yerba mate, especially the polyphenol aspect of things, and even ursolic acid, the saponin, has been shown to be um, anti-inflammatory in itself. Ursolic, ursolic, depends on where you come from. Um, so Again, I mentioned in the beginning, your solic acid is also a molecule found in apple peels. Those of you that know me know I'm a huge proponent of apples, especially organic Granny Smith apples. So many health benefits and tull CT. So we get our solic acid here um, and we see that they can be very helpful in reducing inflammation. So back to the cholesterol aspect. We have these polyphenols, we have these saponins, even caffeine has anti-inflammatory benefits. If we're reducing body fat, we're naturally reducing inflammation. If we're reducing cholesterol, or that's our goal, we definitely want to reduce inflammation. So the research tells us that yerba mate, not only does it have anti-inflammatory effects, the extract has been shown to ameliorate insulin resistance. This was in mice, but we'll get back to this. But the research shows that because of all these different molecules or compounds in yerba mate, it can have a potent effect on inflammation and something that maybe shouldn't be ignored in the whole context of like, this is my journey. I want to lose weight. I want to optimize my health on every level. So um, yerba mate, combining the whole bigger picture with the cholesterol and the anti-inflammation, I'm going to go back and say that this is such a simple tool that many people will benefit from this drinking some yerba mate regularly can also then as we move on help with not just your mineral and electrolyte intake which is super important now for us in the heat which is also one of the reasons why it is popular in these hotter climates in the Middle East, in South America, because they have the potential of obviously sweating a lot and losing a lot of electrolytes and minerals. And some of these 
cultures will carry yerba mate around with them all day in a thermos and just sip on it and um, not only reap the benefits but they're replenishing their lost electrolytes as well but not only that yerba mate has been considered a great way to help support detoxification in your body as well not just through all the different compounds but it, it does have a great nutrient profile it contains vitamin a C, E, B1, B2, B3, which is niacin, B5. It's almost a complete B complex. It also contains, um, apart from what we would think of electrolytes with our magnesium, potassium, sodium, calcium, you will also get manganese, which a lot of people don't get enough manganese in their diet. Selenium, which can be, of course, very helpful for thyroid and metabolism. Uh, we have zinc, we have phosphorus. It contains even more compounds like um, carotenes, which are types of antioxidants, chlorophyll, which if you follow me, you know I'm a huge fan of chlorophyll, especially for detoxification. Um, inositol, which has been shown to help in its own way with fat loss, cardiovascular health, and even improving sleep and cognitive performance. We have tannins in there, which brings me to the point that if you are sensitive to tannins, Yerba mate may aggravate your stomach a little bit and one way to kind of offset that. So tannins are also associated to the bitterness of yerba mate and even green tea, that kind of astringent, bitter, dry feeling that you get in your mouth when you drink green tea that in some people will cause nausea. So if you prepare your tea with water that's not boiling, so just before that boiling point, you should know from your own teapot and kettle, and you make your yerba mate that way, that can really help with that bitterness. So you don't want to boil the life out of the leaves. So just before boiling, and I do that with a lot of my teas, except for black tea, which deserves to be boiled to pull out the full flavor if you're a black tea fan like me of course I am being Irish I'm all over English breakfast tea and Irish breakfast tea I love a good strong cup of tea which is probably why I gravitate so much towards teas for their healing medicinal aspect um, and before we finish up on the nutrient aspect there of yerba mate it does contain some amino acids potentially potentially helping with that uh, nutrient protein profile but at the very least helping with your immune system because amino acids are essential for the immune system so not only the amino acids that we find in Europe yerba mate but the saponins which are these phytochemicals, which are basically a form of polyphenols. Saponins also have beneficial effects on not just the blood cholesterol levels, but stem cells, blood cells, white blood cells, bone health. They've been found to help to specifically boost the immune system and aid in protecting against disease. Um, the... I suppose the anti-inflammatory properties combined with this polyphenol um, potential of the yerba mate are almost bolstering the immune system to kind of be strong in every angle. So yerba mate is an excellent way to increase um, your immune system potential and in turn naturally strengthen your body's defense system um, and then while we're here of course I have to discuss the cancer aspect because this is encouraging to say the least a 2011 study found that yerba mate tea leaves have both not just the anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer capabilities the study showed that the caffeinic acid CQA derivatives from yerba mate tea successfully treated colon cancer. Scientists discovered that in vitro cancer cells died when exposed to the bioactive compounds present in one cup of the beverage. As the scientists increased the CQA concentration, cancer cells died as a result of apoptosis. 
one of the leaders of the study, the University of Illinois Associate Professor Elvira de Mejae, if I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, said the caffeine derivatives in mate tea not only induced death in human colon cancer cells, they also reduced important markers inflama of inflammation. Majai added that this is key since inflammation can lead to cancer progression. Another study from 2020 revealed that yerba mate also protects liver cells and exhibits an anti-inflammatory effect as well as a positive effect on the cardiovascular system. I have a client currently battling um, colon cancer and this is very encouraging research. If you want to look up this study, um, you will find it in the Wiley online library. You could just Google it and it's titled Decathic, Decathic Clinic Acids in Yerba Mate Inhibit NF slash KB nucleus translocation. So nuclear factor kappa B nucleus translocation in macrophages and induce apoptosis by activating capsaices 8 and 3 in human colon cancer cells. Super encouraging, especially a lot of people. I mean, not just colon cancer. I have many clients with who have overcome different forms of cancer and are still battling different forms of cancer. And this is super encouraging. I know it just mentioned colon specifically, but it's polyphenol profile, it's anti-inflammatory profile, it's nutrient profile alone are really going to help a lot of people in this battle against cancer because of all the other components. Um, so one other thing I did want to add in regards to yerba mate, um, we've, we've spoke about a lot, but going back to that GLP-1 aspect, the glucagon-like pep which increases the amount of fat you burn, you can increase the amount of GLP-1 triggered by reusing and continuously steeping the mate tea for a day or so to increase the concentration or extraction of compounds that increase GLP-1. So back in the day when my granny Linny was still alive, she always kept a pot of tea on the stove, always. <laughs> like, it was always warm. No matter what time you walked into the house, that tea was ready to go. And it was super strong, probably why I like really strong tea. But um, sometimes you look in the teapot, and there would be like five or six tea bags. And they've probably been there all week. But she just kept stewing the life out of everything, totally getting her money's worth. But with your mate tea, that reminds me of what she did. So you could totally put a tea bag or two in a kettle or a teapot and just let it stew and then keep it warm for the whole day, even into the next day. And then you're going to pull out more of those compounds that will help increase that GLP-1 um, aspect of the yerba mate to encourage the fat burning and oxidation and mobilization potential. And now what I mentioned there about my granny's tea being super strong, that potentially can happen especially the first few cups of stewing yerba mate tea. Now, you don't want to stew in the aspect of boiling, but uh, then it should start to get weaker and weaker in the flavor as time goes on and the more you dilute it. But I know a lot of people want to kind of know everything that there is to know in regards to fat burning and fat loss. So I try to add in all the little tidbits I can that maybe will make a difference to you and hopefully you do them. But if you do do any of the tips I've given in this episode or you try your bamate, you're generally looking at two to three cups a day. Remember, it's high in caffeine. So if you are going to consume it, best to have all those cups before 1 p.m. noon. If you already have sleep issues, you could swap your bamate for your green tea and or your coffee in the morning if you wanted to, even for a couple of weeks. There's no harm sight 
recycling coffee. I've spoke about that before. So if you take a break from coffee, coffee, not caffeine, you could swap it out for your mate and just keep an eye on like your results for your weight or your body composition changes and even your other markers if you're tracking or keeping an eye on cholesterol and CRP1. And I had mentioned insulin sensitivity. Um, Yerba Mate has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. I did post a study on that in my biohacking group over the weekend. So that's um, my Facebook biohacking help and body weight library. Um, so, so many benefits in a very easy way. You just have to drink the tea. So if you do try this out, let me know. Let me know if you see some results or if you notice any changes, even changes in your cognitive performance and your energy, even hydration. Let me know. Uh, I would love to hear because I like to share results with other people because these real life stories and um testimonies of progress or success can be really encouraging for others and it can help us not to waste money on stuff that maybe doesn't actually work. So I hope you found this really helpful. If you did, please share with anyone you think would benefit from this information. If you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe to the podcast. If you feel I deserve it or you're even finding my podcast informative, please leave a review on whatever platform that you listen to the podcast on. It really helps small podcasts podcasts and businesses like my own to reach a a bigger audience and help more people and I really really appreciate it so thank you for your time today enjoy the rest of your week enjoy the rest of your summer I'll chat to you guys real soon bye bye